Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Educational Podcasting Today, episode number 49, the podcast for educators who are making podcasts both in their home studio and also in their classroom. If you're looking to bring audio and video into your world, this is the podcast for you guys. I want to say thank you and welcome back. We are looking forward to just in a few weeks. We're going to be presenting at the ISTE conference two, two amazing presentations. One is a three hour workshop on Saturday morning. Get this. 8.30 8.30 on Saturday morning, we're going to be doing our extremely awesome TeacherCast educational podcasting workshop. We're going to be deep diving into what is, how to, when to. If you're in the Philadelphia region on Saturday before ISTE, check out our workshop. We would love to have you guys there. We're going to be answering every question from how do you do it, where do you do it, and what can we do with our students. And if you can't make it on Saturday, don't worry. On Monday, we have a one-hour lecture workshop that we're going to be dealing with the same kind of topics, but from a slightly different point of view. There are so many great things happening this year as we get into the ISTE season. I am looking forward to it. And if you guys are going to ISTE, please check in with us. We want to know what you guys are thinking. We would love to connect with you guys and all the other educational podcasters as we go through. Now, I bringing ISTE up for a reason. It's because it is so close to some great professional development opportunities. And I want to be with you for your professional development opportunities. That's why there's many, many great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this and all of our shows. We love it when you find us over on Twitter at podcasting today. Ask us all your podcasting questions. And of course, if you have any audio, you can leave us a voice message over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. We would love to have you guys here and being a part of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Of course, as we said at the top, this is the show all about podcasting, helping teachers find their way to bringing podcasts and podcasting into their home studio. And today I have a fantastic guest. I want to bring on Mr. Tom Gibson. Tom, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great, Jeff. It's good to be here. Thank you so much for being here. It is great to have you. You are, of course, the host of the Stories from the Classroom podcast. Talk to us a little bit about your show. How did you get started? Stories from the Classroom came out of um, a blog post that I was doing uh, a couple of years ago. I was posting a weekly reflection blog on what I was doing. And for a while, I'd want to start a podcast. And I went to a website that was giving me prompts to write about and think about throughout the week. And one of them said, record some audio from your classroom about 10 minutes and reflect on it. And I actually have a bachelor's of science in audio engineering um, and freelance voiceover work. I've been doing freelance voiceover work for several years. So I had all the the technical knowledge of, of audio and everything like that. Um, but just this, this podcast idea had been lingering around for a couple of ide- a couple of years, um, and and I thought, well, why don't I just start with this? Um, and it was originally called the Tom Gibson Podcast uh, because I didn't know what it was going to be. I knew I wanted it to be a little bit more of a narrative, um, and so that first podcast was me taking those clips from my classroom and then just kind of cutting in these voiceovers of what I was thinking about during those conversations with the students. And so I did a couple more episodes like that in my own classroom, um, and then I started. I'm like, well, I know it's called the Tom Gibson podcast, but I think this is probably a lot more interesting if I was uh, talking to other teachers about what they were doing. And so I started reaching out to some of the teachers from my school um, that I knew were doing some really unique and interesting things. And I said, can I just come in, uh, record you when you're doing this activity or this discussion or when you do your Socratic seminars or we knew that really cool government and economics game. Um, and then we just sit down and have an interview about it. And then I, I would pull all that into Adobe Audition and then put an intro and and kind of put music and I was kind of really inspired by podcasts like uh, Radio Lab and a lot of the NPR styles um, to just create sort of this narrative um, as opposed to more of a traditional interview style. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I think this could be something different for the education space because I don't think there's many, many podcasts that are that style in education. Um, and so I did that for about once a month uh, for over a year because I was also doing weekly YouTube videos on my YouTube channel all that was focused on education. Um, and these, these edits took a lot more time. So I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. Um, but eventually I was like, well, no one 
that is a teacher that really doesn't know who I am is going to click on stories from the class or to click on the Tom Gibson podcast. And so I was like stories from the classroom kind of really defines a little bit more of what I want this show to be about where it's where I am pulling audio from the classroom and actually talking to teachers about the innovative work they're doing. And so people can actually hear, hear these conversations in action. And it's not just uh, a discussion about like, Oh yeah, I had a discussion with the student and they said this and this, but they can actually hear that discussion that the teacher had with them um, to add a little bit more depth into it and so um some some episodes have a little bit more of that classroom audio than others given the nature of the episode but i i try to make that a goal with every episode to to have um that classroom audio uh mixed with mixed with interviews and so i've done stuff on like uh i did an episode on mindfulness um and so i had several teachers at my school that do our whole school does this but several teachers that do really well these mindfulness activities so i interviewed them you heard the actual mindful activity that they were leading with the students um, I talked to a, a guy that, in Austin ISD that was overseeing all the mindfulness stuff in Austin ISD, and he had a YouTube channel. So he was talking about stuff, and then I was pulling clips from his YouTube channel where he was interacting with kids. I talked to a, psychi uh, a, a psychologist um, about what's going on in the mind when people are doing mindfulness activities. And so just trying to create this narrative uh, to give a little bit more of a more immersive, hopefully, experience uh, for the listener and and for the teachers that uh, that I'm I'm, that I'm hoping to reach. You you obviously have a lot of stuff that's going on, and, you have a, <laughs> and you've got a great uh, podcast called Stories from the Classroom. And 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 actually, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about this, we just did a home and home where where I, I'm interviewing Tom and Tom interviewed me. So you can check out both of our shows. We've got some great things going on over here. Now the question that we're looking to figure out today is how do you do the balance, right? Because I, I've I've talked to many people who start doing the side hustle inside of their job and sometimes that causes friction with people um give us the the, the brief idea here like do you go to your uppers and say i want to start being a youtuber in my classroom i want to start podcasting with my co-workers give us the down and dirty for all of this stuff because that is a that is a big that is a big topic right there yeah. Um, as far as like, I didn't really go to my superiors for a lot of, I guess, permission to do a lot of these things. Uh, most of the time that I would create this stuff, I shared it with them um, because I'm like, hey, I did an interview uh, with our fantastic science teacher about what she does in her classroom. And I thought I would just share it with you. Um, and I also share it. We're at a private school. So I share it with the admissions counselor uh, or the admissions officer. And so it kind of so she can use it to kind of promote the school. Um, it ends up being a lot of really positive PR uh, for the school. Um, but as far as like some of the privacy stuff, especially if I'm bringing my YouTube camera into my classroom, um, our best practices around that as I have a list of students that their parents have said, no, there's, I don't, I don't give permission for my child to be on any social media or anything like that. And I make sure that they're not in any of the video clips that I have. Um, I also tell students when it, they, they are used to it now, but when the first, the beginning of the year, when I'm bringing my, my camera or my podcasting equipment into the classroom, um, I'm like, just let me know if you don't want to be filmed or if you're not interested in me, you know, like doing, if you don't have to do an interview for the podcast or anything, if you don't want to. Um, so they, they definitely, have that that freedom to let me know um and then as far as uh i don't want to be, get in a situation where a parent is is surprised about seeing like either hearing audio or seeing video of their child and they didn't even know that this was taken so anytime that i have students um involved in any of my video projects uh, i send it to those students uh like if i'm doing something in my second period class i send it to all those students and all of those parents as soon as i upload it and i say hey i just wanted to share uh this podcast with you um about what we were doing in second period um about the students in their robotics class uh, just so you can get a little glimpse of what's going on in the classroom um whether it be video or audio um and i haven't gotten any negative feedback from any parents actually most of the emails that i get back from parents are like wow this is this is great I, it actually gives me a look uh inside of the classroom and you know when my student come when my child comes home and i ask them how school was a lot of times it's like it's fine but they're actually getting to see you know like like, and I, you know, I usually edit it in a way where it's showing like the best things that were going on. They get to see their, 
their kids just having a, a really positive learning experience at school, um, be it just this this cool interaction they're having that's that's being recorded on a podcast um, or if it's being documented in a video. And so those are a few of uh, the best practices. And it's actually led to opportunities. Uh, my admin's really supportive of me. Um, they came to me and said last year, they said, hey, we want to do some really cool high school electives. What did you think about teaching a high school YouTube video production class um, and teaching a podcasting class? And I'm like, I've got lots of ideas for YouTube video production. I don't really want to do a podcasting class because I don't know exactly what I would do. And I don't want to listen to hours of audio <laughs> of like first time podcasters. So I went ahead and this this year I did two semesters of the YouTube video production class uh, and it's become a really popular, popular course. And so it's really cool to have the administrative support uh, in these types of projects. That's awesome that you have all of that support and have the opportunity to really take your classroom and make it shine right many many teachers out there are trying to figure out what they can do to to really show off their students and to show off their school districts now when you're creating this stuff with your students would you say your audience is the community the mom and dad or are you specifically creating this to be the next youtube star because i know you you call yourself a youtuber so i want to figure out where Mm -hmm. where this whole thing is and I, and I don't want to let you go before I ask, are you monetizing this content on YouTube and else that you're also getting paid for during the day when you're teaching? My target audience is other teachers. Um, and so I set up a lot of the, with both the podcast and with the YouTube channel, I set up the videos in a way, a lot of times it's lessons that I'm doing, um, a really interesting robotics lesson or an interesting math lesson or a reflection on my YouTube video production course. Um, and I would, I would structure them so that I'm saying like, okay, this is actually what the lesson is. This is how I assess the students. Um, I debrief the lesson with the students and get their feedback on it. Um, and then same with the podcast, I'm setting it up. I'm like, I'm asking teachers, like, how do you assess students in this? How do you, how do you set them up so that they are actually succeeding in this project or where did this idea come from? And so other educators are my target audience, uh, with all of this content. Um, the students end up watching it because they're in it and they want to see the video. Videos, um, but they they aren't my target demographic, and the the families ne- aren't necessarily my target demographic either. I just share it with them. Um, I am monetized on my YouTube channel. I will monetize a video if I think it'll get you know a lot of views. Um, but if I feel it is not going to get a lot of views, then I won't. Um, some of my videos that do have uh, some of the lessons that are going on in my class are monetized. Them. What do you see is the is the end game for all of this right because many teachers that are are listening to a show like this going how how can i use this craft of audio video podcasting youtube how do i really do this to leverage income how do i do this to leverage other opportunities you have several channels on youtube for several different things Mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about your content strategy here I have a goal um, to be able to create a brand for myself that I am finding primarily uh, financial opportunities um, through selling online courses and curriculum to other educators, um, as well as looking for speaking opportunities. So to break that down a little bit, I my YouTube channel a couple years ago, I spent uh, I spent the whole year going through how I develop my own classroom economy in my math class um, from students applying for jobs where they pay uh, they get paid based on their classroom job, which is usually jobs like writing the agenda on the board and fixing the desk before class t- jobs that help me. Um, and then they get to save their money. They have to pay rent on their desks unless they end up buying their desk and becoming uh, homeowners, I guess. And then they can actually buy other people's desk and become landlords and get money that way. Um, and they get bonus bo- opportunities for bonus money. They get fines and there's classroom auctions that they can use their money to buy real things. 
it's a really complex system, but I created a video series on how I structure it. And I included uh, the emails that I send to students and the forms that they fill out and my thought process when assigning jobs to kids and why I have these bonuses and these fines and this, the way I save time doing these things and the days that these kids have trainings. And so I created this whole package and this whole system. And so a lot of this, any opportunity that I get with the podcast or with the YouTube channel um, to direct people to that product, I send them to that. Um, and it's also led to an opportunity where I'm partnering with um, a company that has an affiliation with different universities where this is going to be something that teachers can actually get professional development credit um, by taking my classroom economy course on how to build and manage a classroom economy through that program. Um, and that's currently in the works. The second YouTube channel is called Tom Teaches YouTube, which I started as a result of one, my education channel having both education content and video production and audio production content and getting two different audiences. And so I'm like, let me split that up a little bit. Um, and two, I was teaching the YouTube video production class. What better way I could create a channel, not only in how to grow on YouTube, but then I can actually actually create videos that are video assignments. Like this is your, your YouTuber assignment. And so someone that's looking for something a little bit more structured where I provide rubrics and I'm going to say, here's how you can assess yourself if you're not in my class, but you're doing this assignment with us and give some a little bit different in hopes that that could become some kind of packaged curriculum that I could sell to teachers or to districts. Um, and recently I, I just applied, I actually submitted my application today for the Adobe Education Leadership Program um, because I use, a lot, I use Premiere Pro, I use Photoshop, I use um, Adobe Audition. And that's going to give me an opportunity to not only build my network and share, you know, the YouTube channel, the podcast, these other courses with people, but it's going to give me an opportunity to do, to do speaking on behalf of Adobe. And that's something that interests me a lot, like public speaking, um, getting in front of people. We had a conversation a little bit earlier, how a lot of teachers don't consider themselves public speakers, even though we do this every day. Um, and so I'm excited about the opportunities that that could, uh, that that could come of that uh, as becoming, um, I'm looking to, to hopefully at least apply for the, Ado uh, the Apple Distinguished Educator Program next year, um, the Google Certified Educator Program. Um, and I know a lot of, a lot of uh, classroom teacher podcasters are a part of those networks. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at with, with the direction that I'm going with a lot of this, this stuff and this content. Tom, you certainly seem like you have your head in the game here and you know what direction we're going to come back in just a couple seconds and continue talking to Tom Gibson all about his YouTube channel, his content creation, some of the th great things that he's doing in the classroom, but most importantly, what advice does he have for anybody that's listening today that wants to get in the game themselves? We're going to be right back here. Take a quick break more with educational podcasting today. Friends, before we move on with our show, I wanted to let you guys know I have been in education now for almost 20 years, and I've seen the changes some students have come to face every single day, whether it's going through school hungry, not being able to see a doctor when they're sick, or not getting the proper rest at night. These challenges make it hard for kids to focus on their learning. I remember a story of a student who came to my office one day and she could barely stay awake due to all the circumstances happening around her at home that were beyond her control. I didn't know what I could do and I wanted to be able to help her out in any way that I could. Thankfully, Concordia University in Portland is leading the way with their three to PhD program that helps to combat students' fears, freeing them to pursue their highest dreams. They're revolutionizing education by creating a holistic model that provides groceries, health care, and even clothing to students right here on campus, helping them thrive and helping our communities strengthen and grow. Concordia's College of Education offers online and on-campus programs where students have the opportunity to learn about a more compassionate approach to education and see how nurturing the whole student can lead to amazing things. To learn more about how you can help students conquer their monsters and achieve their highest dreams, visit cu-portland.edu forward slash let's conquer. That's cu-portland.edu forward slash let's conquer. And we're, use the hashtag nature educate grow. And we are back on educational podcasting today. This is episode number 49. All of our great content can be found over on educationalpodcasting.com. I hope you guys have had a moment to check out our brand new teacher cast 
ultimate guide for educational podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have created a document that is free for download. It is at the bottom of all of our blog posts. Also can be downloaded over at educationalpodcasting.com. If you're looking to create a podcast, put your podcast down on recording, edit it, promoting it, publishing it, social media, SEO, everything that you need to start your podcast is in this document. We have a fantastic blog post all about it, but we also wrap it, wrapped it up and package it in PDF format. You guys can download it today. Check out your teacher cast ultimate guide to educational podcasting. And I'm going to even say right now, volume one, I'm working on volume two right now, which is going to be more classroom focused. This one here is more studio focused. And we're looking at dropping the second one sometime around the ISTE time, right around when we said that we're doing the, uh, the ISTE workshops here. So check out the teacher cast ultimate guide to podcasting over at educational podcasting.com. And I want to bring my guest back on the show. He is the host of Stories from the Classroom podcast, a fantastic show all about what is happening in his classroom. Tom Gibson, welcome back to the show here. Talk to us a little bit more about some of the great things that you are doing, because you said that you are currently in the process of changing your home studio around. You said you're moving, I believe, and yes. you're going to be rebuilding stuff. So let's talk a little nerd stuff here, right? Talk to us a little bit about your podcasting process here. How do you how do you do your recording what apps do you use and then then we'll kind of walk each other through the conversation here Everything. but talk to me a little bit about the recording process and, and you know what what equipment do you have sure the uh, the recording for me uh, primarily is it has to be mobile because i'm going in and out of classrooms i use a zoom h4n pro uh that i have right here uh, it's got two inputs it's great um i use two sm58 microphones for that um when i'm actually interviewing someone um what when i usually in their classroom, uh, maybe after class. Um, I use the two onboard microphones whenever I am actually trying to get audio from the classroom instead of the SM58s. Um, and honestly, there have been days that for whatever reason, the SD card didn't work. And then I just use my iPhone 6S um, audio uh, just to go around the classroom. And then when a student was talking, I just kind of put my my phone kind of in their general direction. Uh, and so that's that's been fine. As far as like what I do at home, my home studio is a little bit more optimized uh, for my YouTube videos. Um, I've got a Rode NTG2 microphone, um, shotgun microphone. So I can get it out of frame uh, whenever I'm recording my videos, but still have really good audio because it's very, very directional. Um, and that is plugged into a Scarlett Focus Right uh, to input for output, I believe. Um, really, really good preamps on that one. Uh, a, a bad a bad uh interface you have to jack the 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 amplifiers all the way up and then you kind of start getting a, a hiss in there um but these they're like right now when i'm talking to you uh like at 60 percent, and that's usually 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 high enough uh even though it's not right next to my mouth um i my videos i still record uh on a a canon t3i uh, which came out in like 2011 which is is still really <laughs> like all that I need. I've got a couple of nice lenses. And when I say nice lenses, like a $125 lens, that's a 10 to 18. I've got like a 24 millimeter lens that was less than $250. So not an extravagant amount of money on the lenses. Um, but that's on this kind of weird mount uh, for when I'm doing videos here at home. Um, but then I just take that off and attach it to a gorilla pod when I'm going to go to school and vlog. Um, and then I've got the, uh, the really traditional, um, road uh canon video mic pro that i throw on top of the the canon t3i whenever i'm recording at school for better audio on my videos um and then when i'm doing stuff like this uh i've got this little tiny gopro hero 4 uh when i'm saying stuff like this this video conferencing um because the canon t3i doesn't really connect to the computer as well because it's an older com uh, older camera this uh, this GoPro Hero 4 is attached to a cam link um, that I use uh, whenever I'm doing uh, interviews and phone calls and stuff like that. And then I actually use the same audio uh, from the Rode NTG2. But a cool thing, so that way I don't have to sync up audio afterwards for my videos from my my Rode microphone. It's plugged in my Focus uh, Scarlett Focusrite. That is going directly to my computer, but I also have an output going into the microphone jack of the camera. Uh, so there's no there's no syncing that I have to do for that. And I've got this little ring light 
and a couple speakers and that's about it and back there in the closet if you're watching the video um, that is where i have my rode ntg2 um, and i've got blankets all up inside uh up inside the closet to kind of create a little more soundproof room where i'm doing a more official voiceover stuff whether for my freelance freelance voiceover work or if i'm doing more of the narrative voiceover work uh, for my podcast i'll go in there because it'll be a little bit less room noise now, everything that we just mentioned, I, I'm taking studious notes. Um, again, this is episode number 49 for Educational Podcasting today. You can find out everything over at educationalpodcasting.com. Check out the archives. Everything we're going to be having links to, and we will make sure that anything that we talk about today, you guys have the opportunity here. Now, Tom, before we get out of here, you have mentioned a few times this whole concept of voice over work. I got to ask, what is it? How does it work? How do you, how do you, how'd you get started? Talk to me a little bit about voice over uh i i in my degree program the sound recording technology bachelors that i went through um i just remember like just thinking it'd be really cool i met a couple of people at, at i think it was south by southwest i live in austin right now and so we had did some work at south by southwest helping with audio and i met people that, that did voiceovers and i did some broadcasting work at a radio station so i always had voiceover kind of in the back of my mind people used to tell me when i worked at a grocery store i'm like welcome to heb good to see you they're like you sound like john wayne or something like that I, I always got compliments just for my normal speaking voice and so i think i thought i think i can do this voiceover thing i've always used voices and everything so in 2015, I started looking at freelancing websites. Um, I created a little demo reel. And the website that I use that is the easiest for me is Fiverr, uh, because people can go and listen to my, my samples, and then they can order directly from me. I don't have to hunt for work like most of these other freelance voiceover uh, websites, where people are like, this is my job. Let me know how much you're willing to do it for. And all the, the voiceover artists are like, I'll do it for $50. I'll do it for $75. Here's a sample. I don't have time to make samples and send them to people and not get paid for them because they chose they didn't choose me because that's not my main thing fiverr lets me put up a, an audio track uh, a little sample video and then people can hear if they like it and they say they message me they're like i've got this how much can you send me a quote for how much it is um and i've gotten to the point where it's actually become more lucrative than most of the other stuff that i'm doing just because uh i'm like a level two seller which is just one from the top just from getting a lot of really good reviews and uh getting completing a lot of voiceovers um and so they they generally will send me the script if it is commercial uh meaning that it's anything that they're getting money for promoting a product um that's like another 50 dollars on top of the job and so if it's 75 words or less it's a base $45 so just right there someone that wants me to do something pretty small I can get over $100 for 20 minutes of work um, I don't get a ton of orders uh, because my prices are a little bit higher than most people on Fiverr. The website's called Fiverr because it started out with people doing jobs for only $5. Um, but I figure I don't want a ton of work. I just want a, the amount of work that will will make it worth my time. And so they send me the voiceover script. Um, I put it on my, I, I open up Google Drive in my closet. Um, I hit record in Adobe Audition. I go in the closet. I record the voiceover, mistakes and all. I come out, um, I process it with, equalizers and compression and de-essers and limiters and all the things that I learned about in my audio engineering program that honestly you can now learn about on YouTube <laughs> if you just like how a compressor works in Adobe Audition, how to make my voiceover sound better. And I have a tutorial and several other people have tutorials on how to do all that stuff um, and make it sound pro. Uh, and then I take out all the mistakes and all the breaths and I do more processing than I do for my, my, vo my podcast because I want my podcast to sound a little bit more natural and less like, are you a teacher that's looking to up your podcasting game? Then you need to check out teachercast.net where, you know, that's a little bit more of what some people are looking for. My podcast, I don't, I don't, I don't process it as much as those voiceovers. And so I send it to them. Uh, they get one free revision. If they need, if I, if I made a mistake or, or, that doesn't count for the revision, but like, can you try it with a different energy level? Um, but it's fun. I like doing it. And it's just kind of, I do a few jobs a month and, it's a, it's a, it's, hey, it's fun if, to get those emails. If, if anybody out there is looking to figure out how to do something on the side, right? Like this is a, a great opportunity where diversify yourself, right? You've got all these different channels out there. Something is going to hit for you at some point in time. Um, it, it, you know, and that, that's one of those great things I love about what you're doing here. And of course, you know, the website over here is, sorry, what your website address? You're good. 
TomGibson.com. Tom is spelled T-H-O-M, short for Thomas. Tom Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N.com. And there you're going to find links to the classroom economy resources that I said, my links to my two YouTube channels. I've got a, uh, <laughs> to talk about Diversify, I have a, an Instagram that has nothing to do with education, nothing to do with voiceover. It's just called Books and Beef Jerky. And I wanted to read more books, and I thought maybe if I take pictures of the books that I'm reading and write reflections of them, that would make me read more books. And I like beef jerky, so maybe that can make it a little bit more niche. And I'm like, if I can get any company to send me free jerky, this will be a win. And I've already accomplished that. So. <laughs> that, that, that is awesome. Um, def- definitely check him out. TomGibson.com. Again, this is episode number 49. Everything here is in the show notes. Tom, I could talk to you for hours, and I know that because... It is now 9.50, and we've been talking since about 8 o'clock already. So we, yes. we've been doing a good job with this. And, and please don't forget to check out Tom's show over there called Stories from the Classroom. Again, links and everything is going to be over there. Um, you know, we didn't even have a chance to, to really talk podcasting stuff, but that's okay. I know you'll be back on the show at some point in time. Tom, uh, just to kind of do a quick wrap-up, what, what advice do you have for anybody out there that is looking to build a, I, I, I always reserve the word side hustle here, but, but anybody out there that's like how should, where, when, why, what advice do you have that teachers speak to them now? I would say make time, uh, plan out how you're going to spend your week. Cause I think that's the biggest thing is people say they don't have enough time to do this. Um, I, I generally at the beginning on Sunday, I think through, okay, I get up pretty early. Um, I get up at 4.30. I go to bed at 9.30, so I'm still getting a good seven hours. Um, I think through what am I going to do in the morning before work uh, for my business? Um, what am I going to do in my prep periods at work? And I get home three, four o'clock. Uh, my wife doesn't get home till six. What am I going to do in the two hours before she gets home? So that way when she gets home, we are spending time together. We're going on runs together. We're making dinner together. We're watching TV together, and we're, we're spending we're, – we have that time. Um, I'm, I'm doing, I don't have kids, uh, but you do, and you have nine podcasts. So it's like, that can't be, you know, you, you find the time, uh, to, to do these things. And I think if you're just a little bit more proactive of, of how you're going to spend your time, um, you'll find that you, you, you have a lot more hours in the day than you think. You know, you certainly have been one of my favorite guests of 2019. And that is why I'm going to give you the amazing opportunity, Tom, if you're interested in taking it, to be a part of the Jersey Five. Five questions that are meant to stump you and get you thinking, Tom, I know you weren't prepared for this. I know you weren't ready for this. I know it's late in the day. Are you ready to take the Jersey Five? I'm ready to take the Jersey Five. All right. Now, I got to tell you, the first one's a little easy. Second one's a little bit harder, and they go on from there. So no pressure at all. Okay. But this is from a Philly boy to a Texas boy. So I'm just letting you know. I'm going to throw a couple curveballs here. Okay. <laughs> the first question here, what is your favorite Twitter account or hashtag to follow and why? Lately, hashtag create EDU uh, because it's it's I'm really been in the Adobe space and that's kind of Adobe's creation education hashtag. Uh, and that's been a lot of fun and favorite account to follow is Sean Cannell. He is uh, one of the two guys that runs Video Influencers, the YouTube channel. Um, and he, I just appreciate all the stuff that he puts out there. He always adds a lot of value and helps me figure out a lot of this networking and branding and, and digital media stuff. Number two, your favorite educational tool to use. And, and if you want to throw podcasting and whatever, but favorite educational tool to use. <sighs> I would say plan board. It is a lesson planning software. The ironic aspect is I don't actually use it for lesson planning anymore. I do it for filling in all of those gaps of that. I was telling you about, um, of what I'm going to be doing in all those time periods. Uh, but I've, I've recently begun using that daily and seeing what I'm, what I'm working on. That looks kind of cool. Chalk.com forward slash plan. Board. Yes. All right. Number three, best advice you've ever been given as a, and it could be a teacher, sometimes I say podcaster, content creator. Best advice you've ever been given as a? Best advice I've ever been given as a teacher, I would have to say don't take yourself too seriously because I find myself I can get really like if, when kids are goofing around, it's like they're not just doing what I say. So many problems just go away if you just laugh them off and move on. 
Number four, what do you hope your listeners, and we'll tell YouTube audio, whatever, what do, what do you hope your listeners take away from your show? I, I hope that they, they take ideas that they feel they can actually implement because that's the goal of, of each of the videos and each of the podcasts. I don't want it just to be like, look at this, this thing that I'm doing that's, that's successful. It's like, I, I want you to see like you can do this too and these are resources here and you can see it happening or you can hear it happening. Um, you can do really cool, innovative work. Number five, and this, this is the toughie here. What is the best teachable moment you've ever had? Ooh. The best teachable moment. I have been learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a year and a half. And I, I remember about a month ago, I was in my class, I'm still a white belt. And I remember just struggling with a move. Um, and I remember not wanting to ask for help. <laughs> I remember not wanting to ask the question when the coach said, what questions do you guys have? Even though it was an environment and a safe, safe, safe and welcoming environment to ask questions. Um, and it made me realize that I have kids in my class that feel like that every day. That's awesome. Um, I told a, uh, a more in-depth story of that uh, on, a, on a previous episode called Using Storytelling in the Classroom. Um, and I, I chatted with a professional storyteller who <laughs> kind of told me what, how, you, how do you tell a story in class? And that was my story. That's awesome. Good for you. Tom, it has been a pleasure having you on. And, and, and certainly, please feel free to call TeacherCast home and invite yourself on the show anytime. I would love to do a whole show on YouTube and YouTubing and all those different things. I would love to be back on. I love talking about this stuff. I, I think that'd be a great idea. And if you're looking to find out more information, you can, of course, check them out over at TomGibson.com. You add the H for... No. <laughs> I was going to say you add the H for savings, but that yeah, doesn't make any sense right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, check out his show. It is called Stories from the Classroom. TomGibson.com. T-H-O-M-G-I-B-S-O-N.com. Um, Tom, anything else that you want to add? I'll give you the last word here. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm glad to just have found this community of, of like-minded educators. Thank you guys so much for making TeacherCast your home for professional development. Don't forget, we've got some great things coming up at ISTE. We've got not one, but two educational podcasting workshops. And I didn't even forget to tell you guys, we're also doing a technology coach workshop also on Saturday, by the way. So if you are coming to ISTE, we would love to work with you, love to meet you guys, and love to hear about your podcast. This show is dedicated to helping the educational podcaster learn how to be the educational podcaster. And we've got some great stuff over on education educationalpodcasting.com. Check it out today. We hope that you guys take a look and make TeacherCast your home for all your professional development. Until next time, guys, my name is Jeff Bradbury reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.